How's it going? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how to seam a commercial carpet for a residential application. Okay, I've got just a traditional, you know, uh, rental grade commercial carpet I'm going to be working with right here. Nothing fancy. It is broad loom carpet, so it is a, a loop pile carpet. We're going to go ahead and row cut it. What I've got to row cut it right here is my number 366 row finder. This is a crane commercial carpet row finder. If you do not have one of these, you absolutely need one, okay? These things are golden when it comes to Berber or commercial carpet. I was going to do a Berber video here, but turns out I didn't have any Berber. Somebody asked me to a Berber video, so we're going to substitute that with a commercial carpet video because it's basically the same. It's all a loop pile carpet. So we're going to get to it right here without any more talking. I'm going to take this little comb row finder and I'm just going to start feeling my way around here in the runs, in the rows of carpet. There we go. I have already found a run. The way you work this thing, you don't just take it like one of these and just push through. You don't do it like that. If you'll notice, I'm going back and forth. It will find a row on its own as long as you're not like way crooked or anything like that. If you just set it down anywhere, start working it back and forth, it will fall directly in the row. There it is. Once it's in the row, you still cannot just go straight over like that. Actually, I did, but typically you'll jump a row or something like that. So you use this row finder by going back and forth like that right there, okay? Now, I've got a 301, I believe is what this is, number 301 cushion back cutter from Crane also. And I have my blade on one side. It don't matter which side you use it on. I'm going to use the same side to cut both pieces. I'm not going to take my blade from this side and put it over here whenever I get ready to cut that side. I want my gauge to stay the same on both on. I want my carpet gauge to stay the same as I cut my both pieces. So my blade is on this side whenever I cut it here and I am going to use this piece so it cut real close to the fibers on this side here and it left some over here. That's exactly what I want to recreate whenever I cut this side, okay? So this is going to be my seam piece right here. I'm going to take and uh, cut me a little bit out. So I've got two cuts to use to put back together. Okay. Got it opened up. Again, I'm not going to change the blade. And I'll show you that difference here in just a second. Okay. So now, I don't, I'm going to see if you can get really close here. I don't think it's going to be enough to even show on this particular kind of carpet. So it's got just a little bit of extra backing. If you see right here, there's just a little bit of backing left on the carpet on this particular piece because I had my blade on the opposite side of my cutter. So now on this other piece... The backing is actually completely straight flush down with, with the fibers there. There's no backing, no extra backing whatsoever. So by leaving uh, my blade on both on the same bleh, I'll start over. So by leaving my blade on the same side of the cutter as I cut both sides of the carpet, what I did, I recreated the same gauge in between each one of these rows of carpet as I made my cut. Now it's gonna go back together just as factory, okay? Um, I've actually got some Oricon weld lock right here because this is a, a commercial carpet. So we're gonna use a commercial uh, seam sealer for this. You notice what I got right there? If, you're, if the store that you work out of has these huge safety pins on their tags, these are perfect. For sticking down in your tip it's a really snug fit and they go plenty far down in here you can see it just fits the bottle real nicely so not a not a lot better that you can do with that so you guys probably know how to seam seal got your little flap right here little flat spot let me look real close right here at it just in case you don't so we have a little flat ledge right here and then the hole is actually right here on this part right here okay so your carpet rides on this flat spot. The leg text comes out of that little hole so it gets directly on the cut edge of your carpet. You don't want to get too much. All you want, uh, for instance, you don't want to get a half inch or an inch over here on your backing, okay? 
you only, only want to get right on the cut edge there where you cut, and that's going to prevent anything from fraying or anything like that. Right here is where you want it. You don't want it on the fibers. You don't want it way over here on the back end, simply right there on the cut edge. Obviously, you're going to get some on the back end, but the less the better, okay? So, we're going to move halfway fast with this just so we don't get an overflow of it. Right there, it's just that simple. I always will take my hand and I'll rake back this way just if any got on the back. You see that? It is latex, so it rubs right off. Now, I'm going to take my fingers just like if I was going to paint something right there, and I'm going to run it right up that edge. What that's going to do is it's going to mash that latex right into that backing there and push it into the little granules and stuff in the backing, in the pick of the backing. So it, it really gets it in there good. You can see barely got a little bit on the backing. You can just see right there, just a little bit on the backing, but it did get right here in the cut edge. You can see it's pushed in there really good, and that's exactly what we want, okay? So I'm gonna do my other piece like that, and we're gonna be ready to rock and roll. If you're, if you're new to seam sealing or you don't seam seal and you want to do it because you feel like you wanna do a better quality work, uh, don't freak out because you're definitely going to overload yourself on seam sailor in the beginning whenever you're getting used to it. Trust me, I did. I would get it on the fibers. I would get too much. I'd have it all over the backing or anything like that. It takes a little bit of practice and before you know it, you will end up getting it just like this right on the edge with just a little practice. That's what you want right there, okay? Even to this day. Sometimes I still get you know, see the two lines there? I still might get it sometimes right over here about that far or something. But most of the time, it works out real nice and you get it exactly where you want it, okay? Uh, if you don't want to wait on your seam sealer to dry, typically you should wait on it to dry if you don't feel like waiting on it. Watch this. This is just a little trick for you FBSB fans and only you, okay? Take you some denatured alcohol right there. Stick a little bit, don't get crazy. Ooh, I got too much. I'm gonna dab it off the biggest majority of it. Stick you just a little bit on a scrap, watch this. Quacko, 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 right up that edge. And right up that cut edge. What that denatured alcohol is, if you ever get it on your hands, you know that it dries your hands out extremely, extremely. It'll make your hands really dry. Well, it's going to do the same thing to that latex. I guarantee you that latex is already dry and ready to use. We don't have to sit and wait on it, okay? It, it dries it right up. Look at there. So the latex now is already took the rubber effect. It's ready to seal. We don't have to wait on it for 10 minutes to dry or anything like that. That's just a little trick my people get here on this channel. All right, so I'm going to use just a traditional seam tape for this, nothing fancy. If you are using a commercial carpet, you should use a low profile tape. I don't have any right now at my studio, so I'm just going to use a traditional tape. This is for medium to uh, light, com or light to medium commercial is what this tape is for. Uh, you pr this is a commercial carpet, but if you're stretching it in a home, uh, you want to get a low profile tape, okay? Because it just shows that much more. And the iron that I'm using is the Taylor 890. It is by all means the best heat bond iron on the market. No doubt about it, okay? So many things about this. If you want to know more about this iron, I have a complete video dedicated to the list. I will leave a link to that video in the description. Okay. Heat shield which is important for commercial carpet. Has the fan on it, you see what's going on there. So this iron is magnificent. You can see that it has a light on it and everything right there. Put my hand under here without burning myself. I'm just gonna push them straight down to the glue, not getting completely in it and stuck, but I just want them to butt up nicely. I don't want one to overlap the other. So I'm gonna keep working it down as I pull them together so that they're both flat. Okay, I got it all together. Hold this with one hand. 
Now, if I was in a room, I would be using a kicker to hold this together as I roll it, okay? I'll hold that together. Get me simmer down now, won't it? Again, kind of just push it to down as I'm pulling it in. That way, neither one of my pieces will overlap or go under the other one. Just keeping it nice and flat as I pull it together there. That way, it goes all together nicely, just like we're doing. So, I would like to have had a board on this. I always like to seam on a solid surface. So that's something that the cool glide got me used to is seaming on a solid surface. I don't like seaming over a soft and spongy pad anymore. It just makes the seam a lot better in my opinion if you've got something solid to work on versus a pad like that. So there you have it. Everything went together nicely. You'd never have any issues out of that. It is sealed up. It's going to show underneath the light if you ever get uh, inspected or anything like that. Ta ta ta. It looks beautiful. Um, if you guys have any more questions, I might follow up this video with a uh, head seam or a cross seam video for commercial carpet or a Berber carpet. I might just throw a Berber carpet in there next week anyway, uh, just because, okay? Uh, there is a little bit of difference in Berber carpet that I might want to address with next week's video, okay? Anyways, if you guys got value out of this video, do not forget to give a big thumbs up and Share the video with your partners, okay? We rise by lifting others. Thank you guys for tuning in to the video. Until next time, FBSB's out.